So we're going to look at downloading and using Audacity. So Audacity can be found on the SourceForge website. So when you get there, click download and the file will save to your computer. So once you've saved the file, you can double click on the file and press run to install Audacity. You can choose our language and press next to install. Audacity is a very small program. You can actually run it from a memory key, just insert it into your computer. So I'll click install and that will be added onto the, uh, my, my programs. An associated download is the lame encoder and this is used to turn an audio file into an mp3 file. It's separate to Audacity. We'll find it again on the SourceForge website and you can choose lame and we can choose uh, the files and download the lame encoder. Now we won't be using this straight away but I'll point to it later on. Uh, at the stage where we want to install it into Audacity. So we'll save the zip file somewhere we know because we'll need it later on. So here's the Audacity window and the main panel here shows the backwards, plays, record, pause, stop and forwards buttons. The very first time we use Audacity we'll choose Edit Preferences. You only need to do this once and this is to tell Audacity what your microphone is and what your um, uh, speakers are. So in the audio I.O. button tab we'll choose for our device, we'll choose whatever our um, speakers are. So I'm wearing a headset microphone so my speakers and device are both the same. Always choose mono for the channels. This means it'll record as a mono. For some reason if you choose stereo the audio will be distorted. Okay, so we're ready to podcast. I have my microphone in set everything up in the preferences, I can click record to start my podcast. As I record I'll see the audio appear in the timeline. If I make a mistake I'll pause for three seconds. That highlights it on the timeline and then I can restart speaking. So there's our first recording. So to edit the podcast we use the edit functions. So I had made a mistake as highlighted by the pause. So I can highlight that mistake, press play just to play that part to make sure it's the right bit, and then cut it out using the cut button or else going to edit cut. That removes it from the timeline. I can play over the piece again now to make sure it sounds okay. And I can now highlight the pause and cut that out and I can just check everything's okay by highlighting the, the section and pressing play. So it's a very easy way of getting rid of something from your timeline. Of course if you mean to undo something or you didn't mean to do something you can press undo. The next thing is to amplify some of your signal. So here at the end the signal is a little bit lower than the rest of the timeline so I want to amplify it. So I highlight the part I want to amplify and go to effect amplify. Now Audacity will choose a sensible number to amplify it, so all you have to do is press OK. Amplify is only good for a signal that is of good quality. So in other words, if you have a very noisy signal, amplifying will enhance the noise as well as the signal. Lastly then, we want to insert a piece that I forgot to add earlier. So here I want to insert a new piece, so I click to the end of the timeline, press record, and speak in my new piece you see it appears on a second timeline. Press stop. You must always press stop when you want to edit. Editing functions won't work if you're paused and that's a common mistake. I'll highlight now the piece that I want to add in. Cut it or copy it. Uh, click on the timeline where I want to add it in and press paste. So it's exactly like word processing. We can just cut and paste pieces of audio. The last thing then is to get rid of that second track so I just X that to cut it out. And there's my first podcast. So I want to save this now, so I'm going to save it in three ways. The first way is as an Audacity project. In other words, a file that I can come in in Audacity and edit again. So you see here it has a suffix .aup. This is an Audacity project file. So I'll give it a file name and press save. 
The second way native to Audacity is a WAV file, a Windows Audio Visual file. So I'll save it again, save export as WAV, and you see here it has a suffix .wav. And then finally, to export it as an MP3 file. The first time you do this, it'll ask you to find the lame encoder you downloaded earlier on. I've already done that, so it's not asking me here. You only have to do that once, and once you do, it'll automatically uh, save it as MP3. So I click on Save. It's asking me for some MP3 tags, and these are useful if you're going to give a series of podcasts, because on the student's MP3 player, they'll appear in the sequence that you listed them. So here, for example, I'm giving the title, the artist and album name, and most importantly, the title number. And this title number will allow us to order the podcast that we present to the students in the sequence which we give the number. Now, of course, if you're just going to send the students a file or put it on the VLE, there's no need to fill in this and you can leave it blank. So finally, let's just look at the files that we've created. We created three files and look at the difference in the sizes of the memory. This is why we like to create MP3 files. Their file size is very much smaller than WAV files. You see here it's about a fifth of the size. MP3 files are compressed audio files. They give reasonably good sound quality for audio without the size that would be associated with WAV files.